Pam. Um, I think the number one priority for Americans when you talk energy is they want what they call energy independence. Now, I know you would refer to it as energy security because it's a global market, but essentially producing more energy than we consume. And I, I can't think of anybody that's done more to help us achieve that. We're not there yet, but I can't think of anybody that's done more to help us move in that direction than yourself. And so my first question for you is, what can the federal government do to help us produce uh, more energy in this country, but specifically more crude, because that's, that's what you do. What can the federal government do to help us continue to increase our crude production? I look at this graph, and that doesn't show us producing more than we consume. So how do we get there? What can we do? Well, first of all, we need to uh, change some rules that are totally archaic, like the SEC rules today, that limit uh, what we can put on the books to five years. And a lot of these resource plays, your Bakken, for instance, it's going to take the next 15, 20 years to develop it. Yet I can't put those on my books. EIA doesn't get the numbers, so those numbers totally distorted. We had to teach them how to count. At one time, they were only taking the crude oil numbers and not, not putting any of the natural gas liquids in. Once they did that, they finally realized that we're up to about 12.6 million barrels a day production in this country. So that, that's the first thing. We've got to get the numbers right. Mm -hmm. And those numbers are, are, are totally pessimistic. The next thing, do no harm. You know, we're, we're going down the right path. If we don't have a, a lot of tax changes and, and things like that, if we can get this uh, ex export ban uh, lifted where people can go ahead with their business, uh, we can get there. I, I don't know if you got it from, I'm, I'm a geologist, so I look at the rocks. But really what we produced in the past in this country for the past 160 years is basically what leaked off of these source rock beds. And now we can produce those source rocks effectively with horizontal drilling. We're on our way to, to get there, both with gas and with oil. And all we need to do is basically do no harm. My second question goes to transportation. Um, recently we've had uh, accidents uh, with rail moving crude and of course we need to address that and you know that. Tell me um, what we can do, what we should do, what you're doing uh, so that we can make uh, transportation of crude by rail uh, safer. Well rail's come a long ways you know since uh, basically it was deregulated. Uh, regulations had put it out of business as we all all know is deregulated, it's come back, it's doing a good job, and we're seeing a lot of, a lot of rail companies that are doing tremendous. I think there's three things. First of all, in, in the oil field, safety is ultimate. So prevention of accidents, preparation, everybody's working on that. So rerouting trains effectively, uh, they're doing that. Twice the rail inspections. They're going to two a month at least on everything, and and anything that's congested, they're trying to trying to handle it as quickly as they can. So this is a, a new thing that's come about. There's some standardization that needs to be done. The rails are into it. They're working on it. Safety is of utmost uh, importance to them, and they're certainly doing their job. As we develop more energy, we need infrastructure. That means both pipelines and rail. You, you would you agree with that? I do, and, and certainly pipelines, uh, you know, uh, rail is, cost more. It will put the oil to the places you need it, like his refinery, and do it quickly. Uh, but pipelines uh, eventually uh, will take the place of it. And just one concluding question. How do we uh, both expand and develop more refineries? We're building a refinery for in North Dakota, I think, first one in 25 years or something, Greenfield. But how do we get more refinery expansion and development in this country? Well, you know, the, the gentleman's right. There's been uh, some capacity added uh, to these existing refineries over the years because you couldn't start one from scratch. There's so much federal regulation, you just couldn't start one. So basically expansion, add new towers and stuff has been done by the refining industry. Um, you know, I think that uh, overall, uh, you know, uh, looking at the regulations that hinder them from building new ones that are more efficient and better uh, certainly needs to be looked at as we go forward. 
Uh, yeah, Mr. Burnett, and, I know, and it's got to be quick. I know I'm tight on time here. My position is that there is sufficient capacity in the United States uh, today in refining to be able to absorb all of the tight oil that's being produced. The issue is infrastructure and getting the oil to the refineries. Um, we at uh, Trainer Refinery have started taking some back, and we would certainly like to take more, but the infrastructure isn't there yet. But these projects are in, all in progress, so it's just a lag effect from the fact the oil is there, it's being produced, there's a lag in the infrastructure, but it will come. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Th thank Chairman. you, Senator. We have